Jason. Yes, it is, and we're here to answer some of your questions. Uh, so let's get started. Sure. Uh, Sylvia asks, "Are you friends offset?" Um, depends what you think a friend is. Um, I say we're friends. I would offset. say we're, we're we're definitely friends. No, um, from day one, Peter was the most accommodating and gracious gracious uh, work colleagues I've ever come across, and so he's been. Fantastic. I have been shouting his praises for a really long time because he's not just a good actor, he's a fine friend. <laughs> Harold asks, the fire scenes look great. Do you both enjoy filming those special type of scenes? The, only, today, part, right? the only part I didn't like is I had to wear that fireman's hat and I, I looked a little <laughs> silly. I don't know, I think you look like a hero coming through there. In my eyes you were. Um, yeah, I mean, I love doing that kind of stuff. I think it it, um, it changes it up a little bit. Um, whenever you can get out of you the regular kind of sets that we work in on more of a daily basis, it's always fun to kind of change it up. So I what, I, what, I, what I thought was so good about those scenes, you have to remember, Jason was limited to what he could do with his head, with his face. No hands, no and no much. movement. It was very impressive, really was. <laughs> Kelly asks, you two uh, look like you're having a blast in some scenes. How do you keep from laughing through some of them? <laughs> well, thank God for run-throughs. Yeah. We, we, yeah. There, there's a lot of laughing in the early part of the day. Uh, by the time we get to taping, we, we sober up. Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, you know, we do really enjoy each other's uh, company. and um, So, yeah, there is, there's a lot of good times that we have, for sure. Deb. Uh, Nisha asks, so much love from Canada. Sweet. Um, if you could play any other character on the show... Who would you want to be? Um, probably Jess. Jess's character. Um, He'd make a great Jill. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. I think you know Jill just has a lot of fun. She's kind of fiery. She gives everybody a hard time, and she doesn't apologize for it. I kind of love her for that. Yeah, yeah. You? I, I uh, years ago we had a character on the show named Colonel Douglas Austin. He was Victor's closest friend. And he was a fake from top to bottom. He wasn't a colonel. His name probably oh, really? wasn't Douglas or Austin. And he was just a hail fellow well met with lots of grand ideas. Oh, cool. And he was just a wonderful character. Fun character to play. Ellen asks, how do you prepare for your scenes? Take it. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, for me personally, it usually always starts at home going over it, figuring out what it is, what I, what the character needs, what I want out of it, how I personally connect to it. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously learning the lines and things like that. Then I come to work and Peter's one of the best that we have here as far as wanting to get together and run it and just kind of flesh it out and, and uh, understand what we're trying to get across. And yeah, yeah I, think, I think the thing people would be most surprised by in terms of preparation, I don't know if this is true for you, um, people always say, oh, you know, when do you read the script? The minute it gets to my dressing room, I open it to find out what's happening next. I'm actually that interested. So uh, the process between that and a week later taping it, um, uh, I've spent a lot of time with the script. Yeah, that's really what it's about. William asks, when did you know you wanted to become an actor? That's a good question. It, it took a while. I was in high school before I started. Uh, in college, when I decided I'm leaving college to go to New York to be an actor. Mm. And then I still faltered many times. So I was probably 25 years old when I said, you know what, I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm gonna commit to this. Wow. And then when you committed to it, like, was it pretty quick? Everything and... changed. Really? Everything changed, yeah. I started wow. working a lot. Wow, that's yeah. fantastic. Um, for me, it was uh, kind of a quiet little grumble in my own little stomach that nobody really knew about when I was uh, probably 16, 17, somewhere in there in like high school drama class. And then I bounced around in Europe and things like that for a couple of years. And then when I got to LA, when I was just about to turn 21, that's when I kind of got into acting class and started to slowly kind of figure out what the whole thing was about and see if I could even, you know, do it. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then couple years of LA, probably about six, seven years of just auditioning and, and things like that. And then, um, you know, then once I started working consistently, um, you know, it all kind of changed at that point. But uh, as far as when I, when I felt like I first wanted to be an actor, it was probably about 16. Yeah. Victoria asks, are there any storylines on YNR that you have actually hit home 
uh, that, oh, that have actually hit home and brought out some real emotions and pain. What was your most memorable storyline? Hit home. They all hit, hit home on some level. They all, you know, I lost my mother uh, uh, quite a long time ago, 20 some years ago. Um, and I'm playing this story right now with Dina and, uh, and her loss and a last chance to spend time with her, to get all I can of the time I have left with her. I've been there before and it's pretty powerful to go through it again. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, just personally, the way I work, and I would kind of speak for Peter here, I think we both bring in a little bit of our personal life into every storyline or try and figure out where it kind of impacts us personally so we can kind of regurgitate that feeling and be authentic with it. So, yeah, I think he's right. We, they all kind of hit home in a, in a special way. Um, I thought you were going to say you, you slept with your brother's sister. No, no, no. My, my, my brother's wife? Yeah, my brother's wife. My brother's me. sister. Brother's wife. No, 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 that's no, even no, worse. No. Isn't it? <laughs> it's a whole other storyline. <laughs> my, my bro- you didn't, never slept with your brother's wife? No, I did not. Okay. Just, no. just checking. Just no, no, checking. no, no. I'm, no, I'm not, you know, I, I don't. I, don't, I, I thought don't. I'd ask. <laughs> Shelby asks Jason, how did you not laugh hysterically when Gina was furious? Loved the scene when Phyllis dumps the coffee down the drain. Um, yeah, um, kind of like what Peter said earlier. You. You read it through a couple times, and then you put it on its feet a couple times, you rehearse it. So by the time you kind of, you know, do it for real, you've, you've gotten that kind of stuff out. But Gina um, is, she's, she's taking this kind of comedic stuff, like, head on, and she's doing fantastic with it. She's, she's so just good. She's so good at it. She she's just follows through, and she pushes through, and she has fun with it, which is really, really fun to be on the other side of that and watch it happen, for sure. Julie asked, where is your favorite place to go on vacation? Um, I mean, me, oof, hard to say. Um, off the top of my head, I say uh, Spain and, and, and Rome, Italy. Those are two of my, my favorites. I'm embarrassed by my answer. I am a New Yorker of the highest order. I just, I cannot spend enough time there. Hmm. I, I, uh, every time I go, I think... How can I own a home here? How can I live yeah. here? I, yeah, New York does it for me. I'm going to be there next weekend. Is that right? Yeah, That's I can't fantastic. wait. Lynn asks, Peter and Jason, if you could give one piece of advice to your character, what would it be? Slow down, Jack. Slow <laughs> down. Not so fast with the trigger. Smart enough, Billy. Easy. Just smart up. Figure <laughs> your stuff out. Kendra asks, Peter, I love your scenes with Melody Thomas Scott. What do, uh, what do you enjoy about working with her? Uh, Melody and I have known each other for 28 years. Jeez. Melody is in large part responsible for my ever being considered for this job. She was on a trip to Canada with her husband, who was executive producer of the show at the time. And uh, they had some soap opera magazines that said that Peter Bergman was leaving all my children. And she said, that's Jack Abbott. And that's how I got called. So I I have a very special place in my heart for Melody. And what no one seems to know is she's a genuinely funny person. She makes me laugh. She's a really funny, clever person. Um, It doesn't come off all the time when you watch the show. (laughs) Uh, KL asked, Jason, are you from St. Albert? Uh, that is true. I am from, born and raised in St. Albert. My mom saw you a while ago buying some chocolate bars at a gas station there. How did your career evolve to end up at the, in L.A.? <laughs> really? Chocolate bars? Yeah. I mean, usually I'm like a bag of chip kind of guy, but uh, probably was. It's a tough up. day. You were low on energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were for my nieces and nephews. <laughs> um, uh, how did your career evolve and to end up in L.A.? Um, you know, I, I kind of said this earlier, but I, I had the opportunity to leave um, St. Albert when I was just turning 18 years old to um, work in, in Europe as a model. Um, I had the opportunity to go to Italy for, I uh, spent about a year there. Wow. So um, that kind of got me out of Canada and out of what was, well, at a time in my life not doing too, too much. Um, so I went from there to Germany for a little while, bounced around that, and then I was able to get a visa to come to America when I was about 19 years old. And I went to Miami and did the modeling thing there for a while, and then when I was just about 21 years old, I came out to LA, and once I got out to LA, I just uh, stayed here. I got into classes straight away and had a couple agents that were really, really helpful with me, and um, 
you know, a couple commercials here and there, a couple jobs here and there, and kind of starts to unfold. But really, it was leaving St. Albert at, at just about 18 years old to move to Europe. That's kind wow. of wow. kicked Great. my kicked my um, my world. Yeah, my parents were. Scared, T- Tamara scared. asks, uh, how do you all have such flawless performances having to memorize lines every single day? Do you have a lot of retakes? We don't have a lot of retakes. Not a lot. No, we can't Sometimes. do a lot of retakes. We're doing a lot really, really fast now. So, so you come to work prepared and you'll be okay. Um, the one thing I will tell you is on a really busy week, Thursday night, I can't seem to get just that. La- I have one more day to do, and I can't get my brain to open up and take those lines. But uh, but that's you know the only thing I have to do is learn my lines and show up on time. Yeah. Uh, the rest everybody else takes care of. So uh, so yeah, that's all I have to do is learn my lines, and so uh, that's what I do. Olivia asks, uh, "What do you guys like about working with Gina?" I mean, there's, that's a long list. Um, she's great. She's just, I mean, talking about being prepared, she's a very, very prepared, very, prepared, very professional, fun, um, always up for the gag, always up for trying new things, for, um, you know, talking it out or rehearsing. And then, you know, on top of that, she's just such an accomplished actress that it's, everything just works with her. Um, and then she's just a great person. She's a lovely person. She has these great intuitive skills. Mm. And the best way to describe them is we run lines a lot. Um, but what we get in dressing rooms and different places that we, we are running lines and everything, once we get out there and they say five, four, three, two, one for taping, um, you're not sure what you're going to get. Mm. Because she is going to come up with something Something new, something that gives it a little tweak that changes it, and I always yeah. look forward to seeing what it yeah, is. Yeah, just kind of listen to her and watch what's going on. Excellent actress. Tisha asks, "Congrats on your new baby. Hey, is congrats. she Daddy's little girl yet?" <laughs> um, that's questions for me. I'm assuming. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, um, you know, she's. Uh, it's it's really beautiful thing to have a little little girl in the house because we have our little boy running around like crazy, which is awesome too. But uh, I don't think she's daddy's little girl yet. She's kind of attached to mama right now, um, still feeding and doing all the fun stuff. But um, she's a she's, beautiful baby. She's a beautiful, beautiful healthy, baby. healthy baby. Both of them. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful mom, beautiful baby. Yep. Uh, Wendy asks, "What would you write for your characters if you were writing the show?" I'll take this one. Mm. I would write that Jack puts Victor through a wall <laughs> and then seals the wall. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I have looked forward for 28 years to Jack really, really winning one battle. One battle. How about you? <laughs> I am just glad that I'm not a writer on this show. That's way too oh, much yeah, work for me. Um, if I was a writer on the show, I'd probably build a beautiful wall that says Newman Enterprises on it, on it, and then I would write in a perfect scene that Jack grabs Victor and throws him through that oh, wall, and so then I seal it all. I like that working with him, and I put Jabot on the front of it. That's how, that's how, that's what I would run. <laughs> that's what I would run with. Um, Inez asks, "What would we, what?" What would we be surprised to know about each of you? Huh. I've never played the piano on Y&R. And you, you play at home? Yeah. yeah. Why is that? See, I'm going to change my answer from the last scene. I would write you as like this, <laughs> you know, huge <laughs> concert pianist. Well, well, yeah, that would be harder to play, a concert pianist. Um, what would you be surprised to know about me? Um, Jeez, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 one of the cool things I think about you that most people don't know, uh, I love your collection of automobiles. Your, your, oh, you know, yeah. yeah, maybe. I have, yeah, I got a little bit of a problem in, in a way. The problem is I don't have a big enough driveway. That's really yeah. the only problem that I have. <laughs> um, I'm like going up and down, knocking on my neighbors, trying to ask if I can park a motorbike in their driveway. Yeah. Um, Pamela asks, Peter, um, what do you like to do in your spare time? I'm a sailor. I like to sail. Um, I, uh, I do a lot of reading. 
Um, I finally, my children uh, always got in the way of my reading books. <laughs> And uh, now that they're older, I have no excuse, and so I get to read a lot. Um, and I, I always joke, the acting I now do for free, they pay me to stay in shape. I do a lot of exercising. Mm, that's, that's good, yeah. yeah. And Lynn asks, hi Peter, how do you like working with, er <laughs> with, Erica, uh, with Eric, a.k.a. Victor? How do I like working with him? I like working with him just fine. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Noreen asks, do you each have a memorable fan encounter? Yeah, I do. I mean, what you got? I mean, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of memorable fan encounters. Um, I met this woman up in St. Albert that um, caught me buying chocolate bars recently <laughs> and uh, I didn't know about it till just now so that's a very interesting fan encounter the first person that ever asked me to sign an autograph it was in New York City and I was I got off a bus when she got off a bus she said excuse me aren't you on I said yeah, yes I am she said would you sign my Bible oh really I said I can't sign a Bible <laughs> she said oh please I, I couldn't do it I couldn't the first autograph request I ever had First one I, ever? I, 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 I had to turn it down. Wow. That's uh, a... Yeah, yeah. I think I would have signed it. You would have signed the Bible? Probably. I don't know. I have funny um, things about that. Rachel asks, I love you both. Who, uh, who are some of your favorite actors? Jason Thompson, <laughs> uh, uh, Eileen Davidson, uh, Beth Maitland. The, the entire Abbott crew is, is a great, great group of people. Uh, love Amelia Heinley, love Melody Thomas Scott, love Jess Walton. How am I doing? You're you're doing fantastic. You're speaking for both of us. Um, you have a couple like you know, like famous friends, actors like Brian. Do you look up to them as like actors too? Like, do you watch them and just are sure? I, you know, their work? I have friends that that work in the theater and some friends who 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 work in film and everything. And I always marvel at it. Mary Ellen always worries. Is it hard for your ego sometimes when mm -hmm. you think, no, I got to work at the top of my field and mm -hmm. these guys are working at the top of theirs and and I love it. I yeah. love going to a play where I know one or two people on the stage. Yeah, that's cool. God, it's a wonderful feeling. That's great. Last question. Beth asks, can you give us any dish on upcoming storylines? Yes. Um, Jack is in the acquisition mode. Jack's looking to acquire. <laughs> That's true. You got anything? I don't know if I do. I, um, um, <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I really do. Do I have anything going on? And I, heard, I mean, I got and, stuff and, going on. I mean, of course, and I heard, and I heard that we might be dealing with another Abbott soon. Another Abbott? Really? What do I know? More than me, apparently. Thanks for spending time with us. This is fun. Jeez. I'm intrigued now. Am I having a kid? No. Oh, damn it. <laughs> oh. oh. Thanks for all the time. That's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Make sure you tune in to Young and the Restless every weekday on CBS.